Hey, this is Andrew Brzezanski, and today we're going to talk about the Brighton Star 28mm f2.8. So this is a lens for the Leica M mount. I got it directly from Brighton Star. They asked to collaborate, and I was very grateful they did because I've always been trying to try this lens, and I've gotten a lot of people asking me to try this lens. So here it is in my possession, and I've had it for the last few weeks. And as you can see, I'm not at home. It's a very, very good travel lens. I can literally slip my Leica. I mean, I'll do it right now. These are short shorts. I'm gonna be able to slide my camera into my pocket. It's so great. It's so inconspicuous. It's so tiny. It literally protrudes one centimeter away from your mount, so it's pretty much the same thing as, as having a lens cap. It's got six elements in five groups, nine aperture blades, 28 millimeter, obviously. It's a 2.8 lens, it's pretty quick. In fact, I find the depth of field looks very similar to something a little quicker because I feel like I'm getting extra bokeh with it. So I'd probably say this lens is a T-stop 2.8, but it's much closer to an F2, and I think the depth of field is representative of that. The rendering of this lens is gorgeous, but we're gonna talk about that in a second, because as per usual, we gotta talk about the build. It's super tiny, all made of brass, black paint. It matches really well with the Leica black paint. So if you have an MP, M10R black paint, whatever, this thing will look great on it, and it feels fantastic. The focus throw is great for such a super small lens. You've got a little tab to focus with. There's really not much going on, on the outside of the lens. You've got a, a clickless aperture. You've got a 25.5 millimeter UV filter. Then you've got a massive protruding rear element on the back of this thing. It's, I mean, that's where all the inner workings are. And it's rangefinder coupled. It can stop down, which is crazy. You got nine blades that are pretty damn circular and they're gorgeous look at as you go up and down. I thought when I was focusing, I would have a lot of issues with you know stopping it down accidentally, but I actually haven't, which is great. And the only thing is there's no haptic feedback when you are stopping your lens down, so you gotta be mindful to look at your lens when you're stopping it down. You're, you actually got a distance scale on this lens, which is awesome. It uh, is in meters on the top and feet on the bottom. I do touch the lens, uh, the, the front element quite often, so having a filter is great because you're gonna wind up wiping this lens quite often. Uh, it's just, there's not many compromises here. The optical qualities are gorgeous. The bokeh is actually really pleasing. Uh, the field curvature, curvature is comical. You've got this gooey, glowy bokeh in the middle. And I think the lens actually resembles more of a 20 millimeter F2 in real world use. And then the bokeh just tapers off and then turns into obviously in focus. So if I were to take a picture of somebody in front of me, especially at medium distances, uh, the bokeh would be very creamy in the middle. The subject will be sharp. And then in the edges, the only in the extreme corners uh, of the frame, you will see that uh, it comes into focus. But it's a quality of the lens, and having shot on the 35 Sumeron for a long time, which is a really uh, a lens I hold dear, uh, this lens resembles it massively, and I really value that because I love the rendering of this lens. At 2.8, it's decently sharp. Uh, you're going to get good subject separation, like I said, wonderful contrast, great colors. Like, I was shocked. I thought I was going to discredit this lens for sure, but no, it's actually a very usable lens, and that's actually why I've been using it so much. I'm just shocked every time I use it how usable it is. Uh, stopping it down to f4, that's where things get really sharp, uh, or, you know, sharp enough, more so. 5.6, sharp as you'd want it to be. f8, fantastic. f11, Diffraction starts setting in, and F16 is diffraction. You know, you're gonna see the effects of it because you're really using such a small amount of glass when you're taking a picture on it. However, <clears throat> the edges of the frame are always soft, the extreme corners are, and if you have any foliage or anything like that, it's gonna be amplified. But it's not something you're gonna notice all the time, especially like I was doing some cityscapes and stuff like that. Not really all that noticeable. And if you stop down to F16, it's the corners are gonna be the most sharp, but they're still not perfect. So I would say if you're gonna do landscapes with it, go ahead and stop it down all the way. However, I think the, the sweet spot would be like F4 for me in real world use, yeah, because that's where you get the sharpest image. The, the vignetting kind of dissipates, because at 2.8, vignette, it vignettes pretty hard. Obviously, this is a super tiny lens. It's to be expected. And then it starts going down, but the vignetting never really goes away entirely. And it's just an attribute at the end of the day. Uh, at 2.8, strong vignetting, but oh, great overall feel. 
and I love the flaring of this lens. That's another thing that I was really surprised to see. It has really, really nice flares whenever you get the lighting right on it. If you're in the city or something like that and you have a street light that hits the lens, it really looks great. I, I, I really like the rendering overall in this lens. Colors are fantastic, contrast is great. Uh, when you're out and about, you can shoot black and white with it or color and it'll just do fine in either case. Uh, but F4, that's where you're gonna see it start really shining, I find. And I, like I said, at 2.8, it's sharp, the bokeh is great, and I actually have a feeling that they designated it as a 2.8 lens because of the T-stop, the amount of light it lets in, but I, I really look at the way it renders. Maybe it's that field curvature or the effect that it gives, but it really looks a lot like it is a F2 lens with regards to its uh, bokeh. Framing with it is easy. You'll never have any finer blockage, of course, because this thing protrudes one centimeter out of the mount. And all in all, it's just a treat to use. If you've been thinking about getting one of these for 360 US, give or take, this is just a fantastic bargain if you ask me. If you're interested, I'll drop some links uh, below and you guys can check them out. I've been really happy with this lens so far. I plan on using it and keeping it for a long time. I'm just enjoying the experience of it all. The portability of it is unparalleled. It only weighs about 125 grams, but it's got mass and heft and it's just, it just pairs so nicely with the Leica M, especially if it's black paint. So thank you for watching. This has been my take on the Brighton Star 28mm f2.8. It's a fantastic everyday lens, and if you are considering one of these, I highly recommend it. It's not the most perfect lens out there, but it's great at what it does, and I take it everywhere with me because I love the way it renders. I'll see you guys in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot to me, and I'll see you guys in the next video.